Hi, welcome to What's Up with DJ Now. Today we're making easy instant pot cherry cheesecake. Here's your ingredients. They'll also be linked. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, if you'd like to please subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and make our graham cracker crumbs. Now you can make these from graham crackers, or you can buy a box of them made, uh, already made, or the crumbs that are already made. Whatever way you prefer. Uh, I already had graham crackers, so I'm just doing that. Um, if you do already have the crumbs, we're going to go ahead and add two teaspoons of sugar. And we're going to also add our four tablespoons of unsalted melted butter. If you already have the crumbs, then you could just mix these like in a little bowl. I already had it in my little processor, so I'm just going to pulsate that a couple times and get those mixed in. Okay, now we're going to be using um, our springform pan. It is a 7 inch springform pan. 7 inch one will fit into a 6 quart instant pot or pressure cooker. And there's no reason to spray it or anything, just we're going to just put in our crumbs. The pressure cooker instant pot is a really good way to make um, a really good moist good uh, cheesecake because of the way pressure cookers uh, cook they have the moisture that's needed to make a really good um, cheesecake okay so we're just going to smash these down to the bottom and we want to bring that up to the edge of the pan about three quarters of a way up and then you want to take either a, a cup or a glass or something and you want to smash that down and compact it really tight into the bottom of the pan. And then we're going to put that in the freezer until we're ready to fill it up. Now we're going to go on to our filling which is going to be two 8 ounce packages of softened cream cheese. The softer it is, the easier it will be to uh, mix up with your mixer. Mine was still a little cold so it's kind of hard to get it going. That's why I'm saying uh, the softer you let it get the better. For 30 seconds to a minute until you get it all nice and blended. Okay, and so now we're going to go ahead and add in a half a cup of sugar. that till that's mixed in well. You only want to mix as long as it takes. You don't want to over mix when you're making your cheesecake batter.
So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add two large eggs. And those should have been setting out to get room temperature just like your cream cheese did. until they're blended well, not overdoing it. Okay, next we're going to put in four tablespoons of flour and four tablespoons of sour cream. Sour cream sounds weird in desserts, but sour cream actually adds a level of moisture that helps a lot of desserts. So when you hear that, I know the first thought is, ooh, sour cream, but you don't taste it as being sour cream. It just helps the moisture level, and it helps in a lot of desserts. Cheesecakes are really easy and fast to make in the pressure cooker. I've done different kinds. This is a, you know, more of a basic type of one, but there's all kinds of recipes out there. Key lime, chocolate, coffee, all different kinds of cheesecakes. Okay, we're gonna mix this in until it's blended up well. Now we're going to go ahead and add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and we're going to just fold this in and mix it in by hand to gently, you know, get it mixed in. I do have a Facebook group if anybody's still on Facebook. It's about cooking and food, anything cooking food related. I'll link it in the description of the video if you're interested in coming to join and be a part of that group. Okay, now I've gotten the crust out of the freezer and we're gonna go ahead and fill it up now. And then we're just going to smooth, smooth out the top, make sure it goes to the edge.
Okay, now we have the pressure cooker with our trivet with the handles where we'll be able to lift it in and lift it out when it's done. If you don't have one with handles, you could wrap it and make little slings with foil so that you can lift it out easier later if you only have the flat trivet. There's one and a half cups of water in the bottom of the pot. I'm going to stick that right on my little trivet, lift up the handles, and then you can easily lift it right down in there. Like I said, if you, if you only have the flat trivet, just take you some foil and make some long rolls out of it, and then put it under the pot to where you can lift it up and out with the um, sling. Okay, we're going to put on our lid. Now I'm showing you in the back that you want to make sure and put put it into the seal mode. Um, mine automatically seals when you close the lid, but if yours doesn't, make sure you have it sealed. And then we're going to set this on the manual pressure cook button. So pressure cook, more and high. And we're going to set this for 30 minutes. and then it will flip on, it will come to pressure. Um, like I said, we're gonna let this cook for 30 minutes and then we're gonna do a natural release, which means let it release on its own for 20 minutes. And then you can come and release the rest of the pressure if there is any. We're gonna take off the lid. Here's our cheesecake, all nice and steamy. I was filling it to make sure it wasn't so hot I couldn't pick it up. And then you're going to lift it right out of there. And what you're going to want to do is take a paper towel and you're going to want to dab. There's going to be some extra moisture and wetness on the top of it from the steam. And you want to just take a paper towel and dab very gently. There's Sammy being nosy. See his nose? You just want to dab it very gently to get all of that extra wetness and moisture off of it. And here's how it looks. Now you're going to want to let it cool for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes out like this. 15, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. And there's Sammy boy. And then you're going to want to put it in the refrigerator and you're going to want to let it um, set. And they suggest that you let it sit in there for quite a while. Um, I think they say two to four hours, you know, at least four hours or so. So um, it's all up to you. I did let mine sit in there for about four hours. And then now I've taken it out. And I'm going to get it ready to put the cherries on top. Yeah, I'm looking now and it's saying that it would like for you to chill it in the fridge for at least four hours to overnight. So I'll leave that to your discretion on how long you can wait before you eat it. Um, I did leave mine in probably for about, you know, eight hours because I wasn't going to plan on eating it right away so but I didn't have to. Now we're going to get our cherry pie filling or you could do strawberry, you could do blueberry, you could do boysenberry, blackberry, whatever you prefer, whatever kind of topping and we're going to spread that out. I'm actually using a little um, lock and lock lid to put that on and then I'm going to be able to cover it up with the bowl. I'm doing it kind of upside down like an upside down uh, dish to hold it. It fit perfect. So I have it down on the lid and then you'll see at the end there's pictures at the end. I can cover it up with a dome and have it completely sealed up to put in the fridge. It fit perfect. And here's how it looks with the cherries. It was so pretty. Don't you guys think it's pretty? Perfect little cheesecake. Here's a close-up of it. Let's 
let's go ahead and cut a piece up. It's nice and firm because it's been in the fridge, so it sets up very nicely. Such a cute little piece, look at it. Here's the close up. And let's go ahead and take a piece. Here's how it looks. And then here's just a picture of it up close. These are some pictures. But I really want to thank you for watching my video. And I hope that you'll try this because it's very easy, very good. And I want to thank you all for watching and I hope you subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.